Back with you on Hitting Hard with John Chuck Rand. Locked on Sports Atlanta. We ask you to head over to UCOM. Put Locked on Sports Atlanta into your browser. Find us there and hit the subscribe button. Leave us a comment about what we talk about. As always, free and available on all of your favorite podcast platforms, including Spotify and Odyssey. Leave us a five-star review and then follow me on my personal Twitter page at JMCH316. You know what a week from tonight is? The NBA draft. Now, listen. I have said this has been like the this has felt like the longest NBA finals ever. It's been like 17,000 days of the NBA finals. And while I enjoy this matchup between Golden State and Boston and all that, I am so ready as a Hawks fan to get to this offseason because this is going to have the chance and hopefully it will have the ability to be one of the more monumental, transformative, important and just downright fun offseasons that we've had as an Atlanta Hawks fan because we expect the Hawks to be big players in whatever is going to happen in the offseason. Now, I think there's a lot of rumor and innuendo. A lot of players that, for instance, are more myth than reality that are available. But nonetheless, uh, and, and this is a year, like I've explained before, that I really wish that free agency and all that was first before we had the NBA draft. But with that being said, do we really care that much about the NBA draft as Hawks fans? The Hawks have two picks. The first one is the number 16 pick in the draft. And I'm looking at different mocks. Bleacher Report says Jalen Williams out of Santa Clara. Okay. CBS has uh, Malachi Branham out of uh, Ohio State. Uh, SB Nation's got Ty Ty Washington. Sports Illustrated has Tari Eason out of LSU. Okay, like, do we really know that much about any of these guys, right? I mean, when you're talking about 16 in the NBA draft, it's such a crapshoot as it is. And again, if we had fantasy first, maybe that was easier for the Hawks to go in there and make a package with that 16th pick and use that as part of a trade or what have you. But unfortunately, the Hawks are going to have to make a deal and either have to pick first or make a move around, you know, their 16th pick of the draft as it is. Move up, move down, put it in a package with whatever it's going to be. Okay, here's the thing. This would be my hope for the Atlanta Hawks in this draft. Okay, one of two scenarios. Number one would be to draft a guy that is valuable enough that another team wants him included into a trade package. Okay. That, yeah, you know, you, you draft whatever Joe bag of donuts is who you draft at 16 and the Utah jazz say, okay, we want whatever John Collins and Joe bag of donuts for Donovan Mitchell. We, we want Joe bag of donuts, Donovan, you know, Joe bag of donuts, John Collins and another piece for Donovan Mitchell, whatever like that. And then we make that move or whatever. So that's my first thing is hopefully that they either draft a guy that somebody else wants or the reality is without expecting them to draft a star, draft another player at 16 that can fill a role and help this team take that next step forward. Not a substitute for a star, but be another role player. Just like how we talked about with, the Celtics and the Warriors, where they found Pool and they found um, uh, Looney, and the Celtics found uh, Marcus and, and Grant Williams, finding a guy who can play a role on this team. But I'll be honest with you, I'm not that excited about the NBA draft for the Atlanta Hawks. I think we're kind of at the point where building through the draft and sitting back and waiting. And and we talked about this a few weeks ago when, when before the final started, which like the final started, I think like right after Easter and they're still going here as we're about ready to hit the 4th of July. Right. But Steve Williams, you know, we, we talked about, or Steve Kerr, I should say, we talked about the fact that there are similarities between the Hawks and the Celtics and the Warriors, as far as how they're building, how they built this and the other, there are some similarities there. And Steve Kerr talked about having patience through the draft and this and that and things like that. Okay. I'm going to say that, you know, I, and I said this when we talk about this, I err on the side of, I'm not patient anymore. I've got my superstar player in Trey Young. I need to go ahead. He's already a 30 and 10 player. I need to go ahead and build my roster now and win now with him. And yeah, if I have a step back here, step back there, I'm still in the middle of the prime of his career. I'm not sitting around waiting 
for him to finally have the pieces that he needs for them to be good and expending some of his prime years, whether it's his prime years, DeAndre Hunter's years, whatever like that. While I've got those guys young, and some of that's, you know, on the cheap or what have you, but they're going to have to probably extend Hunter here sooner rather than later because he's due for his rookie extension. But I don't want to keep building through the draft. I'm not interested in – that's why when I see some of these proposals about, you know, that, oh, man, the, the Hawks are really interested in Portland's number seven pick. Okay. If Sacramento, if the Sacramento Queens are giving away the fourth pick, why would I want number seven and not go get number four? I mean, if I'm going to move up in the draft into the top ten, um, why would I settle for Portland's pick? Why would I not go after the Sacramento Queens pick, who I've done business with before, and if they want to get out of four, because if we're being honest, that's really where the draft starts, right? I think we acknowledge that the top three picks are pretty set. It's Palalo, it's the kid, the big kid out of Gonzaga, and it's uh, the kid out of Auburn. There's your top three. So the draft starts at number four. Why the hell would I settle for number seven? I mean, there ain't that big a difference with all due respect in the NBA draft. It's not like the NFL draft. There is a big points difference in the value of the fourth versus the seventh pick in the NFL draft. But in the NBA draft, where it's all a crapshoot, how big of a difference is there? And it's the Sacramento Queens. Now, I'm not in favor of moving up in the top 10, understand. But my point is, is that if the Hawks are going to move up to go get what they hope is a star player, don't settle for go. Do it. As I keep talking about this offseason with the Atlanta Hawks, to quote Ronald Reagan, this is not a time for pale pastels. This is a time for bright, bold colors. This is a time for the Hawks to be uber aggressive, ultra aggressive, hardcore, you know, pound that thing to the max. If we're going to make a move, not make moves for move's sake, let's make a move. Let's do something that is transformative. Don't settle for seven, go to four. Don't settle for this role player, that role player. Go get a star. Go get somebody. Well, this guy didn't fit. We'll make it fit. I'll make Donovan Mitchell fit. Here's what I know about Donovan Mitchell. It's a back-to-back -back in the NBA and Trey's a little dinged up. I can, If I've got Donovan Mitchell, I can sit Trey for the night and still have a guy who's 26 and five on the floor. Not ham and egg, jabron, you know, a humanoid coming off the bench that I got to hope, or let's hope this guy scores. Let's hope that guy does something. No, I got my 26 and five star that's on the court that, you know, he can play the back to back and he's good to go. And I'll let Trey sit. I got back to back nights in whatever, Philly and New York. I'll sit Trey for a night, you know, to give him a little bit of rest. He's a little bit dinged up or whatever like that. I want that star. So I'm not excited. You know, I'll, I'm actually going to be at the draft and I'm going to be part of uh, some coverage there and MC and a fan event and all that. And that's fine. You know, I'm looking forward to, you know, all that environment. I want to eat. I want to drink. I want to be there and all that when the Hawks make their pick and all that. That's great. But as far as who the Hawks take and we're talking about 16, I don't care. I just read you four different mock drafts that have four different names in them with guys that by and large, 99% of the sports viewing public knows nothing about, unless you're a specific fan of that school or you're my buddy, Deshaun Tate, you, you don't know about these players and especially how they're going to translate into the NBA game. So either, Go out there and get me a pick that I can use as a bargaining chip or go find me another role player and give me somebody who at least is going to try to help be a part of the solution and I'll still have to figure out my star. All right, when we get back, we will get the announcement tonight that should make Atlanta even one step closer to being one of the great world-class sports cities in not just America, but in the world. It's up next, Hitting Hard with John Chuck Rand, Locked on Sports Atlanta.